Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Looking at chapter 28 of the Third Testament of the Bible. It's on death, dying, and awakening in the beyond. I just found out about an hour ago that my oldest and dearest friend has passed away by way of a heart attack. And so I'm feeling a little bit down here as I go into this chapter talking about death. Thing is, I'm sure I'm not the only one, as the world seems to be inundated with death these days. A lot of people dying from viruses, wars, a lot of people being killed and murdered. There's a lot of people sick and are about to die. And so that's why I wanted to do this class on death because it's an extremely important subject however many of us don't understand it now we're coming out of the third testament of the bible which you know shines a lot of light on subjects that up until now have been unimaginable this is the third testament of the bible you can find a link to it in the description of this video both a audio book and a pdf version that you can download to your computer Feel free to jump over and look at chapter 28 on death, dying, and awakening in the beyond. Or stay tuned for this class as we try to break down some of these verses. I'm not going to hit all of the verses in this chapter, but I am going to start here at verse 1. It says, This is the era in which humanity awakens to the beauties of the spirit, in which it becomes interested in the eternal and acts itself. What will the life that awaits us after death be like? This is talking about the era in which we live. Everybody is starting to understand that life doesn't end at death. At least life for the spirit. We're starting to recognize that we are spiritual beings. And that even though our bodies go back to the dust or is turned into ashes, our spirit man gets to live forever. We're going to hear more about that in this chapter, so let's go on. We look down here in verse 4, it says, No one can die. Even the one who takes his own life by his own hand will hear his conscience asking him to account for his lack of faith. There's a lot wound up in this verse here. The fact that we are spiritual beings, and the fact that we will be judged by our consciences. This chapter goes into more detail on both of those subjects. But what I want to bring out about this verse is the fact that it's talking about suicide here. We don't hear about suicide in the Old Testament and the New Testament at all. Or even any other scriptural document that I've ever read before. Including the Apocrypha, Dead Sea Scrolls, Lost Books of the Bible, all kinds of scripture that are out there. But none of it talks on suicide. However, the Third Testament does. And here it's talking about how he who takes his own life will hear his conscience asking him to account for his lack of faith. So this is what happened to us when we commit suicide. We'll go before our conscience, which is equated in other parts of the Third Testament as, as like being in hell. Verse 5 says, My doctrine is not only for giving you strength and tranquility during your passage on earth, it is to teach you to leave this world, to pass the thresholds of the beyond, and enter into the eternal mansion. This is why this chapter is important, because it's doing just this. It's telling us not only how to live here in tranquility in the flesh, but it also teaches us and prepares us for what's going to happen as our material flame is about to be extinguished or even after we have gone on into the spirit world there's some information that's provided for us here of course there's information for us in the living but there's also information that we need when we're dying and things we need to know even after we are dead like we said we are spiritual beings our spirit never dies But if we don't understand what's going on at the time of our death, 
we can awaken in a lot of confusion. There's a lot of spirits out there wandering around that don't know what to do. How it is that they're supposed to separate themselves from this world in which they no longer belong and go on to those higher mansions that we hear about. So pay attention to this class. Go ahead and hit the like button if you haven't done so already and be prepared to give comments as we go. This is some very important stuff for us, for our living loved ones, and those that have already passed on. Verse 6 says, All religions comfort the spirit in its passing through this world, but how little they reveal and prepare you for the journey to the beyond talking about the religions of this world sure they're there for our funerals they do an excellent job of our funerals but they don't prepare us in the living they don't give us any information that helps us live much less helps us to die and go on to the higher mansions to prepare us for the journey to the beyond they don't tell us what we're supposed to be doing Maybe it's because they're not reading the Third Testament of the Bible, which is the only scriptural document that I've ever read that talks about this kind of thing. That is why many look at death as an ending, not knowing that it is from there that you can see the infinite horizon of true life. See, we understand that we are reincarnated spirits. And after our material flame has been extinguished, our spirits will go on. That's what it's talking about there at the time of our death. It's not really an ending, except for, for our bodies, but for our spirit. It is from there that we see the horizon of true life. It is from there that we understand what true life is, the life of the spirit. Death is only a symbol. Death exists for those who do not achieve knowledge of the truth. For them, death continues as a specter beyond which either is either mystery or nothing. See, as long as a person is not aware of their spirit beings and what it means to be reincarnated spirits, death seems to be an ending as if one day they're going to close their eyes and it's going to be it just nothing while others think it's just a mystery they have no idea what's going to happen to them next it is to you that I say open your eyes and understand that you also will not die you will be separated from the material but that does not mean that you will die you like your master have eternal life we have eternal life death is not an ending for us in a lot of ways it is a beginning as we are prepared to go on be reborn again reincarnated again into new flesh and get new bodies and start life all over again now I'm not going to say that that is the goal for many there's a lot understanding the art of reincarnation that want to go on to the higher mansions. They don't want to be reincarnated back down here to earth, the valley of tears, where you have to worry about such things like death of the flesh, pain, sickness, stuff like that. So there's a lot of enlightened people out there who are hoping and praying that their next death will be the last one that they ever encounter and will go on to the higher mansions where they don't have to worry about human bodies anymore or the limitations that are in it. Because we too have eternal life, just like our master, Yehoshua HaMashiach, which some call Jesus. He, after spending a short time in the earth, rose to the spirit world where he lives forever. We too will do the same thing one day. Now that section of chapter 28 was called the immortality of the spirit. It was all about how our spirits live forever. 
the next section starting at verse 8 is the preparation for the parting from this world being prepared to leave it this is extremely important stuff because all of us are expected to encounter this one day and we want to be prepared as we'll find out here verse 8 says you must understand that you gifted with a spirit are the father's most beloved work of his creation for in you he deposited essence attributes and immortality verse 9 says death does not exist for the spirit not death as you know it the ceasing of existence as we learned in the last section that our spirits have eternal life they will live forever one day becoming reunited with the father as one back where we came from the death of the body cannot be the death or the ending of the spirit it is precisely when the vessel closes its eyes to this world forever that the spirit opens its eyes to a higher life it's only an instant of transition on a path that leads to perfection an instant of transition from the moment we die and our material bodies start to close their eyes do our spiritual man start to open its eyes this is a common misconception in the churches these days thinking that somehow the spirit dies it never dies for some of us it's hard to imagine a time when we want to exist well that's because we're thinking spiritually our spirits will always exist it will always be alive our bodies will die but we see that it is precisely when the body closes his eyes to the world forever that the spirit opens his eyes to a higher life verse 10 says if you have not yet understood it this way it is because you still love this world much and you feel closely tied to it in other words worldly individuals have a hard time understanding true life after death they think that this is the only life there is to live they're tied to it it worries them to abandon this dwelling because they feel they are the owners of what they possess in it they are materialistic tied to their material stuff and so they reject the idea of death and going on to true life for their possessions it worries you to abandon this dwelling because you feel that you are the owners of what you possess in it and there are also those that have a vague foreboding of the divine justice and fear to enter the spiritual veil this could be a healthy fear if they learn to prepare for what's expected when they get there verse 11 talks about how we have loved this world too much we are materialistic beings it says how greatly the spirits have become materialized for the same reason verse 12 says only when you have felt death's footsteps near you when you have been gravely ill and suffering when you think that you are only a step from the beyond from that justice that you fear only in those straits do you make promises and pledges to the father to love serve and obey him on earth in the meantime we're in party time disobeying his commandments taking advantage of our free will ignoring our consciences but when we start to feel sick at the point of dying that's when we start to make promises and pledges to the father to love serve and obey that's when we want to do right and for most of us it is too late we can't change our entire lives in those instances when we're laying there on a deathbed there's no way to go back and share love for those that we neglected or serving the father as we should have or even being obedient to his commands we should be doing those things in preparation beforehand not wait until the last minute now getting into verse 13 we start to get into some important stuff he says 
Men have loved this life so much that when the time comes to depart from earth, they rebel against my will and ignore that I am calling them. Ignoring that he is calling us after our material flame has been extinguished, the same as we did when we were in the flesh, that's a serious error. We find out in this section and in others after our body closes its eyes to this world for the last time we will hear his voice calling out to us we are required to respond to that voice if we don't we're going to end up in confusion and darkness and as a wandering spirit down here on the earth in which we don't belong this is the kind of stuff they should be teaching us in our churches because they don't, there are many wandering spirits down here around us at all times. We're going to learn in this section how we can help those individuals as well. See, by ignoring the Father when He calls us, we reject the peace of His kingdom. The verse says, They reject the peace of my kingdom and ask the Father for more time on earth in order to continue possessing their temporary riches. In other words, these individuals are trying to take it with them. We've always heard people say you can't take it with you. But these individuals that's being talked about here in verse 13 are actually trying to do just that. Even though they can't take it with them, they're trying to come back to the earth in order to continue enjoying those riches. Verse 14 says, learn to be sensitive so that you will intuitively become aware of the spiritual life. Do not be satisfied with your life on earth, which marks the beginning of your spiritual evolution, because beyond this world there are superior creations, those higher mansions that we hear about. This here on earth is just our first mansion, our first dwelling place. Once we learn to live down here, obedient to the law and loving our brothers, we can go on to those higher mansions. That's what it means to be an elevated spirit or an evolved spirit. Our dwelling here on earth is just the beginning of our spiritual evolution. Verse 15 says, do not try to reject death when it comes near you because of my will. Also, you should not seek the man of science attempting to miraculously prolong your existence, thus opposing my will for you will both weep bitterly over that error. Talking about people who are trying things like cryogenics or maybe even heart transplants, brain transplants, things that will keep human beings alive, that is against the Father's will. The Father is in charge of our life and He is also in charge of our death. If we try to prolong our life here, we understand that we and the doctors that assist us will weep bitterly over that error. So does that mean if given the opportunity we should reject life support? Of course that decision is up to you. But for me, I don't want to be a vegetable. I'd rather go on to see what that true life is about. Verse 16 says, While you are on earth, you should love the things of this world only to the degree that it will help you to fulfill its laws. Meaning, don't break the 10th commandment, which is not to covet. Ambition is not a good thing. We should be comfortable in those things that the Father has provided us. But you should always be inspired to come to dwell in the elevated spiritual mansions so that when your spirit separates from its material body, it will not be confused nor tempted by those things that it loved on earth. We don't want to be materialistic individuals down here. If we do so, we can get trapped in that materialism and like we said, become wandering spirits, even malicious spirits harming our brothers. We have to be fully prepared to separate ourselves from those things of the earth, our cars, our houses, our clothes. If we don't, we read right here, it says, 
if it yields it will become a slave to them and remain in this world to which it no longer belongs nor can enjoy so you can imagine your spirit being trapped down here on the earth wishing you could once again ride around in your luxury car or something like that but yet you can't you can't drive it you can't even ride in it you can only wish that you was trapped longing for those things that you can't even enjoy verse 17 says be merciful with yourselves no one knows when the moment will come in which his spirit will separate from the flesh no one knows if on the next day his eyes will open to the light like my friend Albert that just passed away I'm sure he had no idea that would be his last day on earth everyone belongs to the Lord of all creation and you do not know when you will be called so we have to stay prepared we can't live this life as if it is our only life it is not our only life we have to live life as if we are spiritual beings here only temporarily as we prepare to go on to true life verse 18 tells us how this is not our world nothing here belongs to us not even the hair on our head or the ground that we walk on those possessions that we have are not truly ours because our kingdom is not of this world so spiritualize yourselves and you will possess everything within fairness and in measure according to your needs and when the moment of your re renunciation of this life arrives you will elevate yourselves full of light to possess of what belongs to you in the beyond spiritualize yourselves this is important we teach a lot about this on our channel so check out some of our other videos and consider subscribing so you can see future videos that come out spiritualization is the opposite of materialization whereas the materialistic person focuses on possessions and tangible things the spiritualist person focuses on spiritual things and our true kingdom which is not of this world verse 20 starts another section in this chapter it's called the passage to another world talking about those transitions that we all have to make to the higher mansions verse 20 says at every moment my voice calls you toward the righteous path where peace exists but your deaf ear has only an instant of sensitivity before that voice meaning that he has been calling us the whole time but we're deaf to that call we are ignoring it we are ignoring our consciences we are in fact ignoring the father except at the moment when we die there's only a moment when we are actually sensitive to his voice it says that moment is the last one of your life when agony gives you notice of the near death of the body then is when you want to begin your life to correct your faults to calm down your spirit before the judgment of your conscience and to be able to offer something worthy and meritorious to the father like I said above it is only when we start to feel ourselves sick and dying and ready to depart this world that we want to do right to correct our faults we need to become spiritualized individuals and try to make these corrections beforehand we do not have to suffer in this way this world that we live in is only temporary we have a whole eternity to enjoy by focusing too much on the possessions of this world and our earthly lives we cause harm to our spirits 
We're reminded in verse 21 that death is under the command of the Father and therefore always just and opportune, even though we believe otherwise, especially when one of our loved ones passes on. We have to remind ourselves a lot of times death relieves people of the pain that they're going through, both physical and emotional pain. But of course that doesn't change the fact that we're sad at the individual's death. We just have to remember that we're not so much sad for what's happening to those individuals. They're going on to true life. We're sad because we're going to miss them. We're not going to get to see them again in this lifetime. But we find out in this chapter and in others that just because we can't see them with our material eyes doesn't mean that they're actually not still with us. The thing about my friend who just died, it's been a long time since I actually got to see him because we live so far apart. But now that he has entered into the spirit world, I can actually commune with him I just have to do so by way of prayers, positive thoughts. That's also what it means to be in the third era. That's what it means to be spiritualized. Being able to communicate spirit to spirit with our brothers that are in the spiritual valley. 22 says the seriousness is not in that men die it is in the spirit lacking light upon leaving the material and being able to see the truth meaning we don't know how to die we've barely been taught how to live our life while we're here on the earth and nobody has bothered to try to tell us what we are supposed to do when that life ends one thing that we heard before, and I remind you, we have to listen out for that voice, for the Father calling us, asking us to be separated from our material possessions, not wanting to stay here on the earth where we don't belong, amongst trinkets and toys that we can't even enjoy. I do not wish the death of the sinner, but his conversion, however, when death becomes necessary either to liberate a spirit or to stop a fall of a man into the abyss, my divine justice cuts the thread of that human existence. See, this is why we die here. Two reasons we die. Two reasons are given for our death. One is to liberate our spirit. Give us the opportunity to go to those higher mansions that we've heard about. And the other is to stop a fall of a man into the abyss. In other words, it's stopping us from causing even more harm to our spirits. The more you think about it, neither one seems to be a very bad thing. Again, we're not crying for those individuals that have gone on. We're crying for ourselves. Verse 23 says, be aware that in the book of your destiny, I have designated the day and the hour when the doors of the hereafter will open, allowing your spirit to enter. There's at least one time in the New Testament when it says nobody knows the day or the hour. I believe it's talking about the day of our death. We read here that there is a book of our destiny. And in that book, that date and that hour is identified. But as long as we're humans, there's no way for us to know that time, that time when we will die. The Father does remember death is under his command. But we see here that death is a door to the hereafter. Once you have entered, you will see all of your work on the earth and all of your past. This is the third testament of the Bible. It was written back in 1884. Now, though it has been oppressed by the ministers of today who didn't bother to tell us about the apocryphal books 
or the lost books of the Bible or the forgotten books of Eden. They won't tell us about the third testament of the Bible. But I think it is known. I think the movie industry has a copy of the third testament of the Bible. Because just like this verse says, many times in movies we're shown that our life passes before our eyes at the time of our death. And that's what we read here. It says we will see all of our work on earth and all of our past. This is at the time of our death. You should not want at that time to hear voices of complaints and accusations against you, nor those who point to you as responsible for their troubles. Meaning we don't want to be accused of harming people while we're here. There's two main things we should be focusing on as we prepare for the afterlife here in the flesh. One is obedience to the Father, obedience to the law, love of our Creator. The other is love of our brother. And if we are harming our brother, if we are doing things to our brother, at the day of our death, we will hear voices of complaints and accusations against us. Those accusations will be held against us and will cause us to feel severe pain in our spirit by way of our conscience. Yet we're going to learn here in a minute is going to be our judge. You look right there at verse 24. He says, who told you that the objective is in this world? Who taught you that death is the end and that you can reach my kingdom at that moment? I would answer that this is what we learned from our churches. That at the moment we die, we were going to go to heaven. Well, this is not the case. This is only our first mansion. We have at least six more to go before we reunite with the Father. So thinking that all we have to do is die in order to reach heaven is an error especially when we haven't prepared for death much less his kingdom verse 25 says death is like a brief dream after which restored in strength the spirit awakens to the caress of my light as to the beginning of a new day for itself Death is the key that opens the gate of the prison that you find yourselves in by being adhered to the material. And it is the same time the key that opens the doors to eternity. See, being here on earth gives us the opportunity to atone for the faults of our previous lives. It gives us the opportunity to make restitution. That's why a lot of us have to go through pain. You ever wonder why bad things happen to good people? That's restitution. That is atonement. It's given to us in bits and pieces. While those who have no desire for atonement or making restitution, their pain, although delayed, will be more severe. 27 says, This planet, converted by human imperfections into a veil of atonement has become a place of captivity and exile for the spirit materialism acts like a blanket over our spirit our spirits don't have much room to breathe down here and in the flesh this won't always be the case we do have the great awakening to look forward to that time when we're all changed in a moment when we all become spiritualized individuals but before then we're going to see what it truly means to be the valley of atonement 28 says truly I tell you that life on earth is one step more on the ladder of life why do you not understand it in this way in order to take advantage of all your lessons? That is the reason why many must return to it again and again 
because they did not understand nor make use of their previous life. Like the Messiah told Nicodemus, you must be born again. That's what he was talking about. Because Nicodemus, just like us, had made so many errors and had not done enough restitution. It was going to take another lifetime in order to get us there. And if we don't realize that we need preparation in this lifetime to prepare us to go on to the beyond, we will have to return here again. Like we said earlier, there are a lot of individuals who understand this and they have no intention on coming back to earth to the Valley of Tears, to the Valley of Atonement again. But in order to go on to those higher mansions, before this earth is burned up completely, we have to learn to live within the law and love our brother completing our love missions in the flesh. Those that don't get this will have to return again and again because they're not taking advantage of the life that they're given. 29 says, It is necessary that you know that because the spirit is to be subjected to a long and sometimes difficult test, it had a vast preparation before being made flesh. Talking about the time that we spend between our lifetimes, a vast preparation. However, thanks to that preparation, it is not disturbed by entering into this life. It closes its eyes to the past to open them to a new existence. And in this way, from the first instant, adapts to the world to which it has arrived. See, that's one of the rules of reincarnation is that we don't remember our past lives once we go into the spiritual valley that time after we die we go through the preparation making us ready for the new life that we are to live a complete new existence not even remembering our previous lives how different indeed is the form in which your spirit presents itself before the threshold of the spiritual life or when it has recently left its body and its world and it has lacked real preparation for returning to its home it feels disturbed the sensations of materials still dominate and it does not know where to go or what to do wandering spirits these are as a result of a lack of real preparation and still dominated by material things at the day of our death we will wander around not knowing where to go or what to do I'm sure most of us do believe in ghosts even though we know that they can't harm us and we can't see them or hear them or even know that they're there we do know that they are there and who are they these spirits that are walking around not knowing where to go or what to do the thing is we learn here that we can pray for them we could actually help them out by way of our prayers they are walking around as lost souls this is because it did not learn that it is also necessary to know how to close the eyes to the world in the last instant for it is only in this way that it can open them to the spiritual world that it had left before where all this past awaited to be reunited with its new experience and add its new merits to all its previous ones We've talked about this in this class. We have to understand what it is that we have to do at the time in which we die. Go to the description and get a link to the third testament of the Bible and check out chapter 28. Or go back and listen to this class again. Because this is extremely important stuff understanding what it is that we have to do at the time of our death. This is why I'm doing this class at this time. Like I said, 
my best friend has just gone on to the spirit world and I'm afraid I missed the opportunity to share with him this information well I have a few other friends out there and I hope they get this message before that time comes 32 says as he recovers the light a dense veil clouds his mind the tenacious influence of all he has left behind inhibits to feel the vibration of his conscience as the shadows fade allowing him to reintegrate himself to his true essence this is talking about at the moment of our death there is much confusion and much pain death sounds painful based on what we read here and other parts of the scripture it sounds like it's painful for our spirits to actually be separated from our bodies and I remember that being portrayed in our movies like I said I think the movie industry has a copy of the third testament Will there be any who upon hearing and reading this message reject it as useless or false lessons? I tell you that only he who is found in an extreme grade of materialism or blind fanaticism could reject this light without his spirit being moved. Thank the Father that you are still listening to this video because you wouldn't fall in one of these two cases extreme grade of materialism inundated by your stuff thinking that your material possessions are the most important things to your life or blind fanaticism that's talking about church and church doctrine being caught up in what they teach you down there how you don't have to prepare for the spirit world all you have to do is die and you're going straight to heaven those people will reject this message they will reject this light meaning they will reject this understanding of the truth the next section of this chapter is called reencounters in the beyond 37 says I want you to be men of faith who believe in the spiritual life if you have seen your brethren depart toward the hereafter, do not feel them distant, nor believe that you have lost them forever. If you wish to be reunited with them, be active, do good, and when you reach the hereafter, there you will find them awaiting to teach you to live in that spiritual realm. Now this part of the scripture is a bit complicated because you have to understand that there are different mansions but it's saying here that if we want to see those that have passed on we have to do good and be active so that we can be reunited with them in the higher mansions it says if we do so we will find them awaiting to teach us to live in that spiritual realm But what if they weren't as spiritually involved as we were? How can they be in a higher mansion than we are? In order for this to make sense, we have to understand that if somehow we did end up in a higher mansion than they are, we will be able to see them in their lower state we will be able to help them being more elevated than they are and if that be the case it will be no problem for us to reunite with them however if we are on a lower state than they are then we won't be able to reunite with them the same as it is right now with us being in the flesh and those elevated spirits being in the spirit world they can come down and visit with us and even help us and spend time with us anytime they want 
We, on the other hand, have to reach a certain level of spiritual maturity even to try to communicate with them. So this is why we have to prepare here on the planet while we still have our material bodies so that when we are offered the opportunity to go to the beyond, we can at least be on the same level as our loved ones. Else, we won't be able to find them there. Verse 38 says, Who has not felt uneasiness about the life of the hereafter? Who among those who have lost their dear ones in this world has not felt an eagerness to see them again or at least know where they are? You will know all of this. You will see them again. We are a family here on earth. At some point, the entire earth will go up into flames. At that time, everyone here is going to go on to the higher mansions. We will be reunited with our loved ones at that time, if not before. Verse 39 says, verse 39 says but you should earn merits now. Because it might be that when you leave this earth, you will ask in the spirit realm, where are those whom you expect to find? And you will be told that you cannot see them because they are in a higher level. Do not forget that a long time ago I told you that in the house of the father there are many mansions. Like we said, you want to earn your merits. You want to prepare yourself now. You want to do good and be active now. So that you could be at least on the same level as those loved ones that you want to see again. They are somewhere now still preparing to go on to higher mansions. Their spirit is still evolving. It's not like they're somewhere waiting on us. Like we said, death is a doorway to the spirit world through which we enter into true life. These individuals have a lot more light than we have. So they're not being stagnant. They're not doing evil. They understand the progressions that their spirit has to take. And so if we ever want to catch up to them, we have to start earning merits now, paying restitutions for the faults that we have on our spirit, doing good deeds for our brother, completing our love missions, learning to live within the law, bearing our cross. Suffering pains and hardships with humility. This is how we earn merits. This is how we prepare ourselves to go on to the higher mansions. There are two other sections in this chapter, both of which are dealing with the conscious. I'm going to say those two parts of this chapter for another class you can go over it and get a link to the third testament in the description both for audio book and a pdf that you can download to your computer or you can hit the subscribe button and or that bell button down there so you can see when we put out the next classes to finish out the chapter in the meantime leave us a comment Hit the like button if you got something out of this class. May our Father bless you and keep you. Our Father make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May our Father lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.